So I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update about what is going on with me. Um, I'm sure you're all kind of curious. You haven't haven't heard from me in like a week or so, and and you're kind of curious about Kim. What is going on? How what is happening? You know, have you found a job yet? Technically, I'm hired. However, they do not have a truck for me. So, let me explain what happened to me. What 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 went on, all right? So, obviously there was some misinformation going on because I kind of thought that I was going for a final interview with the company to find out exactly everything about the dedicated account that I supposedly was being hired for. I got there, you know, 30 minutes early to my suppose it, I say suppose it, interview. Uh, I got there at uh, 0830. And uh, the lady that I was supposed to meet didn't show up until 0915 to 930. And it was at that point. Uh, you know, that I found out that she actually was not the one who was supposed to be doing my interview or bringing me, hiring me on. Uh, it was actually supposed to be somebody else who wasn't there. So I was like, okay, so what are we doing? You know, um, I'm trying to ask her questions about the job and all the information I'm getting at the time is, well, I don't know what you're going to be doing. That is handled with... Uh, the temp agency that we're hiring you out of. And I'm like, okay. Um, they didn't really give me a lot of information either. But I said, okay, well, we're here. And uh, then she proceeds to tell me that uh, my information is not even in the computer system yet. Uh, so she goes about putting all my information into the computer system. And and then we go out there to look at the truck which they wanted to put me in. Well, of course, being a trucker, and I'm an old school trucker, I absolutely despise and hate automatics. Now, for those of you who are new to trucking, you probably love automatics. However, for us old school people, we don't trust them. And the reason we don't trust them is because it took a long time to get them where they are today. And a lot of times, even those who have been driving for a while who drive automatics will tell you that they have to shift into manual before they go up a hill or come down a hill. And when they go backing up, they tend to jerk. And they, they like to slam into docks instead of uh, gently tapping the dock. There is a big difference, and those customers who are listening uh, to what I'm saying absolutely understand what I'm talking about. Anyway, I don't particularly care for automatics, as I just mentioned, and as I think that you get the idea of, but I was like, okay, whatever, you know, it's a job, right? I need a job for the, uh, four more years, maybe five. Okay, at the most. And and um, I can deal with an automatic. All right, it's a truck. But we're doing the pre-trip, and the windshield washer filler bottle is leaking. And I get in the truck, and it has a check engine light on it. And I have to move another truck to get that truck out. And then I got to move that truck that I just moved put it back in the spot and then we go in and and there's another piddling around on the computer a little bit more talking to somebody else in another office somewhere I don't know where and then it's like well uh, l let's get you logged into the uh, log book right because of those of us who are truckers we know what this is this is a digital log book and we got to go, every company is a little bit different. Everybody has a little bit different type of electronic device that they use. 
which really that should be standardized. I think uh, the FMCSA needs to come through and standardize that. For those of you who do not know what the FMCSA is, it is the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. Okay? Um, so we get that done, and then they drop this bomb on me. Oh, well, you need to take that over to uh, the, the uh, mechanic shop in town and uh, have them take a look at it, see if they can't fix the check engine light. I'm like, okay, I can do that. How am I going to get back here if they have to hold the truck overnight? Oh, well, uh... Uh, 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 oh, oh, just, just call this number and, and, and one of us will come pick you up, which is what happened. I mean, they had to keep the truck overnight. I get over there to the mechanic shop. They have absolutely zero clue about what I'm talking about. I got to fill out paperwork for them. I don't even know what company this is that I supposedly I'm signing on with. So I'm like, well, um, I think it's this, but it could be this. So I don't even know the actual company that I'm supposedly going to be driving for. Second red flag, okay? I get back to where I have my pickup at. Hey, baby. And um, now it's them on the computer trying to find me another truck. And I'm assuming that they're going to drive a truck over to where I'm at. Uh, no, they are going to use a truck that's been sitting there on the yard for a while. Okay, that makes sense too. It's a local job. You expect the trucks to be a little bit older, a little bit less maintained. You expect certain issues with the truck, right? This just just common sense with a local job. Well, there's two of us now, because the other person who was supposed to be there at noon has showed up, okay? Also with the idea that he was coming in for like a final interview before being hired on, which now there's two of us in this loop, okay? We go out there and there's two trucks. The one they want to put me in, uh, you turn the, you turn the, the key and nothing happens, and it was hard to turn the key, so it wasn't the original key, it was a, it was a made key, which didn't really fit the key slot very well. Um, so, of course, it being another automatic, I'm looking for what they call a cutoff switch, which is, what that is, is it's a switch that they turn to turn the batteries off when you park the truck for any amount of time. This is to save the battery power, um, it's a safety issue. Well, there's no turnoff switch for that because this is one of the older automatics. And it's got a fuel leak. It's got an oil leak. It's got a power steering leak. It, the oil pan is leaking. It looked like it had a cracked leaf spring. Um, it, basically, I would not drive the truck. Okay? So I go over to where the other guy is also looking to come on and I'm looking at his truck and he's got the truck running and I'm like dude you need to turn it off now and he's like why and I'm like because you got air in your fuel filter and he's like what I said you see all those air bubbles in the fuel filter he's like yeah I said well if you hook that to a trailer and you could leave this yard you're going to get about three or four miles down the road and it's going to throw an air code and shut the engine off on you He's like, what? I says, if it doesn't do that, as soon as you go up a mountain or any kind of incline, it'll do that. Um, because it's got air coming into the fuel system, and the computer will read that as uh, loss of fuel pressure, and will throw a code first, and that'll, that'll pop a check engine light up, and then it'll shut the truck down. And... Oh, lo and behold, yes, he has an oil leak too. And he's got a huge freaking nail stuck in the sidewall of one of his tires. So it's like, that truck goes down too. Now, remember I said I was there at 8.30 in the morning. 
Well, here it is, almost three o'clock in the afternoon, and now I'm be, and now I'm asking, you know, am I going to get paid anything for moving your truck? I'm not even concerned about all the hours. I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, I did do something for you today. I did move your truck from where from where we were at through town on your route, which actually took me on a non-truck route, and I had to U-turn and go around to get that truck delivered to the mechanic shop. And then I had to stand around the mechanic shop and wait on somebody here to come pick me up. Lo and behold, I asked them, I said, am I going to get paid? And they're like, well, you have to contact the temp agency. We don't know. And I asked the, guy, the other guy signing on. He said, well, they told me that they were going to give me like an uh, hour of pay, which is like 25 bucks. I'm like, 25 bucks. I've been here almost six hours. And now I, I, I just kind of looked at her like, okay. So what are we going to do? Are we going to have another truck? Or what, what is the deal? Well, we're going to have to call you on Monday. So technically hired. No truck. So I very calmly left their electronic logbook there after I signed out and walked away. I don't want anybody to take any offense to this, but that had to be the most bizarro hiring event in my 20 years of trucking that I have ever gone through. That's not to say that I haven't had some strange hiring events, because I have been in the business for 20 years. But that one right there, just really, that's one I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. Because that was just really bizarro. So, that's my situation there. Now, moving on. We have all heard about the Queen dying, and my condolences go out to the whole United Kingdom for the loss of their Queen. However, there are other issues in the world that we need to be looking at. We have massive storm fronts. One has been slamming the west coast of Alaska. One has just went through Puerto Rico, knocked out all of their power, and is now hitting the D Dominican Republic. And one is over there on the east side of Africa, slamming that area. And the devastation going on in these areas is just absolutely horrendous. My heart goes out to every one of those people that are in those situations. This is why I prep. I have been out of work now for three weeks. And I haven't had to go to the store. I haven't had to go do something for somebody just to make money to pay bills. All my bills are paid. Okay? This is why you prep. Because you never know what tomorrow will bring. Now, could I, right now, drive down the road a couple hours, walk into a trucking company, and have a job today? Absolutely. Unfortunately, 99% of those jobs will be regional or over the road. 99% of those jobs. Because most of the people who get the local jobs do not leave them very easily. They normally stay there until they retire. Which is what I was planning on doing with my last job, but we know how that went. Um, but this is why you prep. Because you never know. I had no idea 
that I was going to walk into my company that I was working at to get my check and end up being unemployed by the end of that day. That was not my intention at all. However, these storms through life come through and they, they, they slap us without warning. And this is why you prep. Am I upset? A little bit. Am I distressed about my bills or uh, getting work? No. Again, this is why you prep. You prep so that you can weather these storms, whether it be a day or a month or even a year. You prep for that. You prepare for anything which could happen. Thankfully, I have always kept enough money in my account to cover several weeks of no pay. I've learned this the hard way through trucking because I, I've been injured on the job and had to learn it that way. Secondarily, thankfully, I do have family who, if my situation becomes dire, I can call on. Now, I understand that a lot of you are going, well, I don't have that. I completely understand that. You need to build your family. You need to have that because you cannot survive on your own. It will not happen. Okay? Um, I can survive a lot of things on my own. I can't survive everything. And that's just the God honest truth. So, I wanted to come on here and I wanted to let you know, no, I haven't dropped off the face of the earth. No, I'm not in dire straits. Okay? I am a little bit kind of in that flux of looking for work, but... Um, it seems like I have work, it's just no truck. Um, so I am talking to someone else, because obviously, if the one company can't bring me on because they don't have a truck, obviously, you know, we need to get to work, right? You don't make money by sitting on your butt at home, okay? Unless you just happen to be talented and, and can make that work for you. Uh, I'm not that talented, and I don't even have internet here at the house, so that's not going to work for me. Um, so, I just wanted to come on and let everybody know what's going on with me, and that's what's going on with me. And yes, I, I have had offers for Over the Road. I've had three of them that I really like, and I might, I, I'm, might be considering... Uh, those this week but you know going over the road for me would be a difficult decision because I have the house I have the chickens I have the cat I have the dog um, of course since I do hunt of course I have uh, my various instruments that I use for that which I would have to find a safe place to store if I went over the road. Because I would not leave them in the house, uh, even in a safe. I, I would not leave them where uh, my house could get broken into and the whole safe took off. No, I, I wouldn't do that, okay? Um, so I, w I have found a place that will store one or two of them, but... Um, it seems to be a little bit on the expensive side, so I'm still looking into that aspect. But yeah, this is uh, this is uh, my situation right now. This is what's going on with me, and this is why, like I said, this is why um, I prep is because of just this type of situation. You never know. It could be the death of someone. It could be suddenly the economy collapses. It could be suddenly the power goes out. It could be the Yellowstone volcano, which is acting up here lately, um, going off. 
You know, Yellowstone had a 3.9 earthquake. That's unconscionable, okay? That's reason for concern. Um, so, I mean, it could be nuclear war, okay? I prepare for that. I mean, you have to determine that you're going to survive no matter what. Um, for those of you who know bushcraft, you know as well as I do, I can take a, my backpack and leave and survive. Um, that's a skill. A lot of you don't have those skills, and I realize that. Um, a lot of you need to look at just a simple preparedness, which is one to three months of food, water, uh, medical supplies, and have your finances in such a way that you can sustain yourself for that amount of time in the event of a loss of a job or a sudden collapse of the economy, etc. You need to be able to do that. So that's all I have for you. And uh, this went a little bit long. Um, I normally don't make them this long, but I wanted to make sure everybody knew what was going on with me and the craziness that I'm dealing with right now. And um, that's what we got going on. So everyone have a blessed week and bicycle.